So plan C, there is no plan C for immigration amnesty. However, 92 legal scholars have put their signature on a petition calling for the vice president and Kamala Harris and the Senate Democratic leadership to include all of the immigration protections that we've talked about, both plan A and plan B, in the reconciliation package despite the parliamentarian mm. ruling against the move now according to these scholars and i have to tell you something i learn about this as we go along because the one thing i am not a scholar of is senate parliamentary rules i don't think many people are but these 92 scholars are experts mm. in senate parliamentarian rules and they have wrote a letter to kamala harris our vice president senate majority leader charles schumer democrat of new york and Senate President Pro Tempore, Patrick Leahy, the Democrat of Vermont, Pro Tempore is the number two person in the Senate, and they're saying that they should overrule the parliamentarian because the parliamentarian's ruling not to include immigration in the reconciliation package is not a binding ruling, but it is up to the presiding officer of the Senate to issue a ruling contrary to her advice. Now, the presiding officer of the Senate in a 50-50 tie is mm. the vice president, mm. Kamala Harris. So the scholars wrote, as you know, the vice president serves as presiding officer when she is in attendance. And obviously, if it's 50-50, she needs to be in attendance mm -hmm. to break the tie. And the president pro tempore designated representative serves as the presiding officer at all other times. So if Kamala Harris is not there, the president pro tempore is Patrick Leahy, also a Democrat of Vermont. At issue is the parliamentarian, Elizabeth McDonough, this lady here. She said on September 19th, both plan A and plan B, plan A was the four amnesties we've talked about, which was the amnesty for the DACA recipients, amnesty for TPS, amnesty for agricultural workers and amnesty for frontline essential workers. That was not legal to be put into the budget reconciliation. The Senate Democrats came back with plan B, which was move the registry date, move the 245I date. She also said that was not legal. She said the language if enacted would have allowed the federal government to offer legal permanent residency to around 8 million undocumented immigrants and immigrants on humanitarian parole programs who would otherwise not be eligible for permanent residency. And she felt that was a law change, not a budget rule. And she said that was substantial policy changes and the things that can be put into the reconciliation are things that control the budget. However, the scholars, these are the 92 scholars. If the Democrats want to rest on something, they can put their hat on and they can say, well, we're following what these scholars are telling us, the legal experts. They said, when determining whether a provision is extraneous, the presiding officer may rely on the Senate parliamentarian for expert advice. So, okay, we can go to the parliamentarian and ask, is this extraneous or is this part of the budget? However, as past parliamentarians have <laughs> emphasized, the ultimate decision on a point of order lies with the presiding officer of the Senate, subject to appeal to the full Senate. The presiding officer, therefore, must exercise her own judgment in deciding whether a provision should be stricken from the budget reconciliation. So the presiding officer would be Kamala Harris in a 50-50 tie. She can overrule the Senate parliamentarian, and she could put in Plan A, Plan B, or both Plan A and Plan B if they choose to. Oh, wow. That could be appealed to the full Senate. But then if Kamala Harris is in attendance, the full Senate wins out 51 Democrats for 50 Democrats against. So if all the Senate Democrats stick together, at least according to these 92 legal scholars, oh, wow. the immigration Plan A and Plan B if they choose to, or both or one or both, can be put in to the reconciliation bill. They would have followed the parliamentarian rules if the budget would pass with a potential immigration amnesty. So if she's not in attendance and comes out with this, then that would be a big 
she would Probably, be in attendance. Of course she's gonna be in attendance. I know, but I'm saying, so why are they keep on saying like, if she's in attendance or not? She has to be in attendance. Okay, but do you think she's going to positively like 100% vote yes for it? Well, if Joe Biden in his second day in office came out with the USA Immigration Act of 2021, right. which basically would have legalized everybody, mm -hmm. and that's his policy, and this is his vice president, of course she's gonna be there. Mm -hmm. The issue is gonna be, are they gonna get all 50 senators oh, okay. to agree that's to this? Okay. okay, remember one Democratic senator doesn't agree, it's like a house of cards and the whole thing fails. Okay. So it's like Houdini act on a high wire. Now we have Democrats like Senator Manchin and Senator from Arizona, mm -hmm. who could very well be in the Republican Party and nobody would blink an eye and say, you don't belong in the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. They're in the Democratic Party, but oh, they are man. conservative Democrats. Democrats. And we talked <clears throat> about yesterday, which we didn't know about this new right. idea by these 92 scholars when some of the protesters followed Senator of Arizona into the bathroom oh, yeah. and was saying, hey, pass the immigration laws. And I mentioned yesterday, they shouldn't be following her into you the bathroom. Yeah. They should be following the, the parliamentarian into the right. bathroom. But now we know this information. I take back what I said right. yesterday. Right. I'm glad. She followed this lady into the Senate. Oh, bathroom. it seems like the Lucha, the, <laughs> the Lucha organization is doing their research so uh -huh. they know who they're coming right. for. That is right. Let's see what happens now. This is an important legal writing that was given to the Democrats that the Democrats can say there are 92 legal scholars, experts out there. I mean, how many experts could there be on Senate parliamentarian rules that have signed professors of law, experts in the field who have signed on and said, if it's a 50-50 tie, Kamala Harris can come in and overrule the parliamentarian and put these immigration rules in place. So, just when we thought, this is like a cat with nine lives. How long can this go on for? There needs to be a decision made. Well, Very they, no? no, because they remember there was, the government runs October to October. Oh, that's right. right. And we said that they passed a temporary budget to fund the government to the first week of December. We are going to be talking about this between <laughs> now and the first week of December. December. And hopefully mm. by that point, nothing crazy happens in the world. It would be a travesty. And by the way, if they don't come together and pass this reconciliation, they've signed their death certificates as terms of politicians. Not that anyone's going to come kill them, but in terms of their, career. their careers and everything, the promises that all of these congressmen and senators and Democratic leaders have made to their constituents, the people who voted for them, the people who right. canvassed for them, to come back and say, we can't pass anything. It would be the end of their political careers, and next year the Republicans would take over everything. And then, trust me, you'll oh. see a pumpkin starting a political campaign. Because Democrats couldn't fulfill their immigration promises. Not only their either. immigration promises, any of their promises, mm. you know, in this reconciliation bill is child care, <clears throat> free education, <throat> the start of fixing our climate crisis, investing in America for the future. I mean, it's, it's everything. Yeah. Infrastructure, everything. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.